Having spent about five months with the Moonlander as my daily driver, I've finally arrived at a layout that I'm pretty happy with. So for other Moonlander users, or perhaps just interested parties, I thought I'd take you through this layout and the sort of compromises and choices that I've made along the way. Now I'm a front-end developer primarily and writer, and so my choices are based around those needs. I also switched to Cormac DH at the beginning of the year, so there's that to factor in as well. In fact, let's start with that because that has influenced quite a lot about the layout that I've gone for. You can see that my board no longer has the majority of the stock keycaps. Now, I've only recently changed that, but I like having proper homing keys on the N and the T keys because I'm using Colmac. And ZSA doesn't yet have optional homing keys for Colmac, so I've sacrificed a little bit of that lovely backlighting goodness to get proper homing keys in the right position. So what you're looking at now is basically a mismatch of ZSA keys on the thumb clusters and then a couple of mixed up signature plastic DSA profile key sets elsewhere. I like to think it looks a bit ghetto, but maybe you just think it looks like a mess, you know, to each his own. Regardless, these keys at least let you see that physically, despite it being Cormac DHM, it's a fairly conventional layout. I'm not one of these people that likes 18 layers and only 20 keys actually ever in use. If anything, I'm the opposite of that. I try and use all the keys that are available and then I just switch between just two layers. In terms of looking at the Oryx layout, let's start at the top left here and then we can move clockwise, basically. So you can see I've still got an escape up at the top left. Now, I do use escape quite a lot, especially if I'm using Vim for a spell. And I've tried moving that escape around quite a lot to, to various other positions. I've had it um, where the Dell, uh, the delete key was, um, you know, where traditionally you'd find caps lock on a normal keyboard. I've tried moving it to one of these thumb cluster keys. I don't know if it's just because I'm long enough in the tooth now that that kind of muscle memory is just very hard to get rid of, but I've settled with it back up there. And even though it's a, you know, it's a bit of a stretch when using Vim, I've still ended up most happy with it in that position. Standard number keys going across. And then before I go across to the, the right hand side, you can see I've got show desk here. And all that actually does is send an F11 key, which in Mac OS, which is the OS that I'm using nearly all of the time, that just does a, a show desktop action. It's not something I use very often because my desktop's generally just a complete mess, but it's there when I do need it. Then across to the other side, I've got here F12 and Finder. Now this is using Tap Dance, which I found very useful for odd keys um, with the Moonlander. So in this case, I can send a tap and I get F12. And then if I hold it down a bit longer, I get it to open the Finder for me. The F12 is the thing I use the most because I have that to open my dev tools, um, which given how often I break things, is it gets used quite a lot. And then the rest of this is pretty self-explanatory and a backspace up at the top right, as you'd sort of expect to find it on a, a conventional keyboard layout. Now, down this right-hand side, I've got my brackets, which you can only just see um, the square brackets there, but obviously they double up with your curlies as well. Um, and then I've got a, a space cadet shift here, so if I tap that, I get a right parentheses bracket in, in UK parlance. And if I hold it in, I'm getting a shift key. So that's, that's pretty handy. And I, I tend to swap quite interchangeably between I also have a space cadet shift here, um, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So, so yeah, down the bottom right hand side here, I've got hyper and I use that for setting up shortcuts with other things because the whole point with the hyper key is it's something that's not gonna be used by a normal keyboard shortcut in a normal program. So for example, in Sublime, I hold that down and press S to toggle my sidebar. Um, in the OS level, I hold that down and press G to do a screen grab and copy it to the clipboard. I use it with hookshot to move my windows around with these nav keys. So yeah, hyper key. Coming back here, I've got a standard arrow cluster, which I like having a proper arrow cluster on my keyboard. I know for Vim purists, they've probably just been sick in the mouth a little bit, but I'm too old to care about that. I use lots of different applications and I find the arrows indispensable. So there, I'm done defending myself. And then into this, the, the right hand side thumb cluster, you know, these thumb clusters, I just still don't feel like I'm really making the most of them, so I'll be keen to hear what you're using yours for. Um, but I, I tend to use this key, these, these outermost keys quite a lot, so I'll use that and the left-hand side one. Um, I've got space there and I've got enter over here. But these inner ones, well, the middle one just doesn't get much use. I tend to forget I've even got tab set there and I tend to forget I've got a backspace there. I do use these inner ones. I use these single quotes and double quotes 
quite a lot. I've, they're, they're sort of bedded in now, but I just forget about these middle ones. I almost feel like I could lose that key and not really suffer at all. So maybe if they bring out new thumb clusters that have just got two keys there, that will be more useful for me. Now perhaps when you first look at the, the Moonlander, probably the most prominent keys are these big fat funny shaped keys that you don't get on other keyboards. And as nice as they look aesthetically, I just haven't found a good use for those. What I tend to use them for, well, what I've got them mapped for is two Space Cadet Shift buttons, which, I mean, it is handy if you're doing sort of gymnastics where you, you know, you want to do, you want to hold down this shift and get a key over here, or vice versa, you can hold down this shift and hold a key over there. I found it quite good for that. And it, you know, it's not getting in the way, but it just feels like maybe that's a bit of a waste. So do let me know if you think you've got a really good use for those keys. So yeah, I've got a little bit of kind of sensible thinking going on here because I've got single quote this side, double quote this side. I've got minus key over here on tap, zoom when I hold it down. And if I double tap it, I get an M dash, which I tend to use quite a lot in writing. And then like the equivalent of that over on this side is the plus key, um, which I know he says it's got the equal sign, but obviously equal sign and plus are both on the same key. Um, so I get a shift and that key for a plus. Equals gives me, uh, sorry, a single tap gives me an equals and if I hold it down, it zooms in. So that's, I tend to use that in graphics applications like Sketch, or if I'm doing Final Cut Pro, it lets me zoom in and out of the timeline. And then back on this left-hand side, I've kept a very uh, conventional three key layout there for the same sort of keys that you get on a standard Mac keyboard. So I've got uh, Control, Option, Alt, and then the Command key. And I wanted to keep those in the same positions, just so if I do ever find myself on another keyboard, I'm not suddenly flummoxed because they're in completely different places. And then one thing I've added fairly recently, which I'm getting a lot of use out of, is this cheeky little page down here. And what I've got this set for is so that it's page down ordinarily, but then if I hold this key, which is my, my layer switch to my second layer, this becomes a page up. So I'm finding that pretty handy in a text editor, Sublime or Vim, page up and page down. Um, but also reading web pages, um, I tend to use page up and page down quite a lot there. This key I've got set as um, the sublime go to anything shortcut. So you can see I've mapped that there to left shift, left command and the R key and that'll let me do a find anything in sublime. And then back tick is the equivalent over on this side. Back up this side, everything where you'd sort of expect it I think. I've got the shift space cadet there on the left hand side, a forward delete as opposed to backspace there, which I find pretty useful. And then a tab kind of where you would expect to, to find it on a normal keyboard. Then in terms of the second layer, like I say, I'm, I'm using all these keys and only just a couple of layers. On the second layer there, you can see I've got the, the page up that I talked about before. And then it's pretty straightforward. I've got the F keys in very conventional places here. Well, only slightly odd in that I go to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and then I do 11, 12 that way. I don't know why that makes sense, but that makes sense to me and it works really well, having that key for the open dev tools. I've then got some pretty straightforward media controls here, track back, track forwards, volume, um, and then I've got sort of basic paging keys here, which again, I tend to use like home and end in Final Cut to skip to the beginning and the end of the timeline. Mouse keys here in the sort of WASD positions here. Um, I've got a nice straightforward play pause for media. Oryx key for the time that I do Oryx training now. Lighting stuff, I've kind of given up on it to be honest. I don't really do much with the lighting. Um, I've got these colors set on here so I, I can see it when I'm switching um, when I'm switching the, the layer physically on the keyboard even though I've got these non see-through keycaps it's quite easy to see that I've switched layers. So again these mouse keys, this isn't something I use a lot but it, it is pretty handy. The odd occasion where your mouse runs out of batteries or you can't find a mouse, at least you know you've got it there in a pinch. So there you go, that's my Moonlander layout. I'm glad to be at the point where I'm no longer changing things every day. This has stayed pretty stable for the last two months or so. I feel like I've arrived at something that whilst I've got a few niceties in there, it doesn't depart too much from some general conventions like arrow clusters and F keys across the top, that kind of thing. And I hope this has maybe given you some ideas of your own, but let me know down in the comments below of whatever heinous crime you think I'm guilty of in terms of this layout and how it might be improved. And also let me know what you've done. Link me up to one of your um, layouts. I'd love to see what you've done with yours. Particularly these thumb clusters. I really don't feel like I'm perhaps making the most of the thumb clusters. So I'd love to see what inventive things other people have done with theirs. If this video was useful, please give it a like. That's how the machine, the mothership, tells other people about these videos. And also if you like more tech, web, keyboard related stuff, make sure you subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you again sometime.